An awful lot of people are taking vitamin D supplements these days. Chances are you either are taking a vitamin D supplement or you know someone who is. Hi, I'm Dr. Chris Masterjohn and you're watching the Daily Lipid video blog. Today I'd like to introduce you to a new series that I'm writing over at my blog Mother Nature Obeyed entitled An Ancestral Perspective on Vitamin D Status. During the course of this series, I'd like to apply a critical eye to how we currently determine whether someone needs more vitamin D and what we do about it. And through the course of this series, I will be outlining some potential harms of the way we currently do things, mainly an increased risk of soft tissue calcification, which can contribute to problems like kidney stones and heart disease. I will conclude by offering some practical recommendations about how we can improve the way we currently do these things. But in the meantime, I'd like to focus on my first post in the series entitled Problems with the Naked Ape Hypothesis of Optimal Serum 25-Hydroxyvitamin D. Now, 25-Hydroxyvitamin D, or 25-OHD as we abbreviate it, may sound like a mouthful, but it's just a technical term to refer to a compound that our bodies make from vitamin D that we can measure in the blood to try to determine someone's vitamin D status. So what is this naked ape hypothesis, and why is it a problem? Well, I'll start by explaining why it's a problem. The reason this hypothesis is problematic is because it influences many researchers to interpret profound uncertainties in the scientific literature in ways that cause a bias towards recommendations for really high intakes of vitamin D. So what is the naked ape hypothesis, as I call it? Well, the naked ape hypothesis goes something like this. Humans evolved way back in the day in equatorial Africa, where they were exposed to maximal sunshine because they lived as naked apes, not having yet invented clothing or indoor lifestyles. And because they were exposed to maximal amounts of sunshine, which is where we get our vitamin D from primarily, they must have had really high levels of vitamin D compared to what we have today. And our best guess as to how high those levels were are the levels found in modern populations exposed to maximum amounts of sunshine, particularly modern lifeguards in Israel and Missouri. Furthermore, the burden of proof lies on anyone who wants to argue that the safe and optimal levels of vitamin D are anything other than those, particularly lower than those, found in these populations. Now this may seem reasonable on the surface, but it actually depends on some pretty problematic assumptions. It basically assumes that there was some critical window of time between when humans lost fur and gained clothing that constituted the era of the naked ape, and that it was precisely in that critical window of time that the requirement for 25-hydroxyvitamin D was indelibly fixed into our genome, never to be altered again. Let's take a look at some of these assumptions. First, were we ever truly naked apes? Well, if we take at face value the current scientific estimates, it would appear not. Scientists estimate that we lost fur and gained dark skin pigmentation around 1.2 million years ago, and that we didn't even start developing light skin until about 30,000 years ago. In between that time, we developed widespread use of clothing, probably body, pig, uh, body paints, and botanical sunscreens as well. So we were never truly naked apes because as soon as we lost a protection from the sun afforded by fur, we gained that uh, protection from dark skin pigmentation. And before we lost that, we developed clothing and other means of protecting our skin. Nevertheless, suppose we don't call our prehistoric ancestors naked apes. Could we still try to guesstimate their 25-hydroxyvitamin D levels by looking at modern lifeguards? Well, no. Modern lifeguards aren't good proxies for several reasons. The first is that there are no good proxies. The climate was different back then. It was colder. Aerosols that block UVB exposure from the sun were a lot higher, suggesting that vitamin D status was probably lower, although we don't know for sure. Anyway, these lifeguards have pretty significant evidence of solar damage from too much sunshine, 
Worst of all, they have 20 times the risk of kidney stones as the general population, and kidney stones are the most sensitive sign of vitamin D toxicity, so they're not good proxies. If we look at better proxies, like traditionally living people who are less white than these lifeguards and have skin tones more appropriate to what we would assume people naturally living in equatorial Africa would have, we're looking more at 30 to 40 nanograms per milliliter, much lower levels than the 50 to 65 nanograms per milliliter found in these lifeguards. But they're not good proxies for prehistoric levels either because there are no good proxies for prehistoric levels. Now what about this idea that the vitamin D requirement was indelibly fixed into our genome 200,000 years ago or so? Well, there's good evidence that certain populations, such as the Inuit, probably African Americans and maybe Asians, are adapted to lower 25-hydroxy vitamin D levels than white people are. That kind of variation means that the requirement has continued to evolve over time, and so it was never indelibly fixed into our genome long, long ago. So these are the problems with the naked ape hypothesis of tw optimal 25-hydroxy vitamin D, as I call it. If this topic interests you, I suggest that you continue to follow these video blogs or to follow my series over at Mother Nature Obeyed to see how it develops as it continues to evolve. And once again, I want to thank you for tuning in to this video blog. I'm Dr. Chris Masterjohn. This is the Daily Lipid Video Blog. I hope you tune in again next time.